Hi, uh, I'm Zach Roberts, uh, Truth Out. Hi! <laughs> Um, there's been now BP has a has a, Are we on? Yeah, you're on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, BP has a long history in, in Alaska and problems with spills and, and safety precautions. They were in part uh, during the Valdez spill. They were the ones that were supposed to take care of the preparedness part of the plan, and they failed at that. Um, and once again, we see in the Gulf. Their, their uh, preparedness was not up to snuff. We have a 400-page uh, document that includes dead links to websites and so on. Where, where do we go from here with British, British Petroleum in Alaska and across the country? How do we trust them? How do we take care, you know, how do we continue with them as a company? <laughs> well, the fundamental question you're asking is, what do we do to recover from the loss of trust? And I think that is part of why Americans are so stunned by what happened in the Gulf of Mexico that we had all reached a point where we kind of believed that a really big spill couldn't happen. That we had regulations in place, that we had laws in place that would keep something like that from ever happening. And that technology had advanced far enough that we could just trust the technology. And I think that is one of the big lessons, that even if people want to believe that technology is perfect, it isn't, and there's always some degree of risk. So what kind of laws and regulations need to be in place to minimize that risk? And also, what kinds of spill training, response capacity, equipment storage, etc., really should be considered the base minimum before you allow oil and gas development to take place. Those are exactly the questions that the Commission is focusing on, whether we're listening here in Alaska or in New Orleans or back in D.C. Uh, we're hearing lots of different opinions about that. Some people who want more regulations, some people who want to just enforce the regulations that exist now, people who want us to change to a system more like Norway has that requires a safety case, a, a preparation associated with minimizing risk that really takes into consideration the entire business plan, not just of a particular company, whether it's a BP or anybody else, but all of the subcontractors, all the folks who are involved. We haven't reached any conclusions about that as a commission. We're still in the doing the research and the listening phase, but by early January, we'll have a report. And, um, and we'll see, I'm sure some of it will relate specifically to the incident, specifically to BP. But I think most of what we will focus on is moving forward. What are the ways in which we as a country can increase the trust level so that we do feel comfortable having continued oil and gas development, whether it's in Alaska or whether it's in the Gulf of Mexico or any place else. How, how do we get, um, you know, whether it be, I, I like the council ideas, but having been to the Cook Inlet uh, Regional Circuit. RCACs. <laughs> yeah, RCACs. one of those initials. Yeah. Um, having been, and seeing the, the, the pamphlet where it's completely and utterly funded, or it's, it's drastically funded by oil companies. And we stand in a in a research or not in a research facility, but well, I guess it's a library. So it's, it's a, a library. Facility. Yeah. You know, and that's in one way or another funded funded by ConocoPhillips and other you know, mm -hmm. other oil companies. How do we ever? I guess this goes back to the once again the trust. How do we trust the research that can possibly come out of these places? And we have reports in the Gulf of uh, uh, BP and companies, uh, other companies buying essentially buying professors. Well, there are several questions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We are an oil and gas state. Alaska has basically an economy of three parts. One third oil and gas, one third federal spending, and one third everything else. So obviously, oil and gas development is a big part of our past, our present, and likely our future, at least for some for foreseeable period of time. So yes, a lot of our public services, whether it's K through 12 education, the university, roads, ferries, whatever is paid for by oil and gas. That doesn't necessarily mean that we can't be good regulators of how the oil and gas development takes place. It's kind of, it's a different question whether you should do it or not, or how you do it. And I think we're trying to focus on the how piece because we weren't asked by the president, should we do oil and gas? We were asked, 
how do we take how do we put in place mechanisms, whether it's laws, regulations, or whatever, so that we minimize the risk? Um, that's really what we're focused on. The bigger policy questions about whether we ought to be less reliant on oil and gas, either as a state or as a nation, um, important questions that the president, Congress, legislators, the governor need to address. That's actually not the focus of the commission, but. I, um, I've got to go. One question. Have you talked to Ricky Ah? Sure. Yeah, yeah she called me when, when I was That's down. <laughs> well, when I, I've, I've known her for the years. Yeah, year, obviously, I've yeah. I've known her for many years, and when I was down in the Gulf, she gave me a call, and I talked to her, and she was busy. I mean, I, I, I guess I should say, has the commission discussed with Ricky Ah? I mean, she's one of the... No, she has not testified before the... I think she actually submitted written testimony. I'm sorry. Maybe she did. She may have submitted written testimony on the question of the safety of oil spill responders. Yeah. I don't think she's offered anything else. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Thank go. you much. Bye. Much.